Sirius is almost twice as bright as Canopus, the next brightest star. Its future remains an intriguing prospect as the nearest A-class main sequence star to our own sun. Where will Sirius end its days, and what might we see from afar? Hi everyone, Vega here, and in the next Futures edition of our Brightest Star series, we return to the close by Alpha Canis Majoris system to peer into the future of this magnificent A-class star. So, let's get to it. During daylight hours, the star of Sirius can be seen under specific circumstances. Optimal conditions involve a clear expanse of sky, elevated vantage points, and the star's transit directly overhead, alongside the sun gracefully descending alongside our horizons. The southern hemisphere proves more accommodating for such observations, and it benefits from Sirius's southerly declination. This pattern will continue, and indeed the cosmic fate of Sirius is to gradually inch closer towards our solar system. Over the next 60,000 years, a subtle enhancement in brilliance is projected to occur, which will culminate in a peak magnitude of minus 1.68. Not only this, but in an incredible coincidence, Sirius around this time is also destined to seize the title of the Southern Pole Star in around 66,270 AD. During this epoch, Sirius will approach within a mere 1.6 degrees of the southern celestial pole, a result of its motion in the south to southwest direction. Unfortunately, for those of us lucky enough to be living in the northern hemisphere in over 60,000 years, this impending celestial phenomenon will only grace the skies of the southern hemisphere. After this, of course, a slow departure in distance and corresponding wane in luminosity await over many millennia. Although Sirius's distinction as the brightest star in Earth's nocturnal expanse will indeed persist for a while. In fact, around 150,000 more years to be precise, when in AD 210,000, the star of Vega, an intrinsically more luminous A-type star than Sirius, although further away, will ascend as the more dominant stellar presence. Regarding potential future missions involving Sirius, an intriguing revelation may have an important influence. A-type main sequence stars, including Sirius, lack convective zones and consequently, utilising Sirius as perhaps our primary target for interstellar probes, based originally on the notion of harnessing a potent stellar wind to decelerate the spacecraft, may at this point actually require reconsideration. However, the notion of utilising cosmic medium winds still does remain a viable avenue for exploration. So far in our search for planets around Sirius, we've drawn a blank. However, if we delve just a little further, a compelling picture emerges. Research surveys do appear to allude to a prevalence in massive planets in orbit around A-type stars. Unfortunately though, the typically rapid rotation of these kind of stars does complicate the measurement of minuscule Doppler shifts which are caused by orbiting planets. What this means is that planets are notoriously hard to spot in orbit around A-type stars. However, in the far future, which in for Sirius's case will be in around 200 million years, a turning point arises for A-type stars when they metamorphosize into cooler red giants. The slowed rotation would facilitate detection then via the radial velocity method. Perhaps we'll just have to wait for 200 million years to find planets around Sirius. As of 2011, the hunt for exoplanets around stars that originally were something similar to Sirius, M and K type giant stars such as Pollux or Gamma Cephei, has indeed borne fruit, with approximately 30 Jupiter class planets detected around such stars. Of course, what this means is that Sirius may well have planets, it's just that we can't detect them yet. Indeed, it's thought that around 1 in 6 stars that boast twice the mass of our Sun, like Sirius, harbour Jupiter sized companions, a statistic that does indeed contrast with the ratio of a paltry 1 in 16 for Sun like stars. Sirius, of course, is currently thriving on hydrogen fusion within its core, yet, like its celestial brothers and sisters, it continues its march towards change and navigates a series of stages dictated by its consumption of its hydrogen fuel. Sirius's future journey encompasses, of course, the countdown of its days on the main sequence, before like all A-type main sequence stars, it moves off the main sequence to begin its red giant stage, again, in around 200 million years from now. As Sirius ages and exhausts its hydrogen fuel, it will gradually swell, with its outer layers expanding, and ultimately the process will end when the star evolves into a full red giant. Due to its greater mass compared to the Sun, when it does expand, Sirius is expected to exhibit a heightened energy output, and this might make you think that Sirius will indeed end up larger than the equivalent Sun at the equivalent red giant phase. 
However, Sirius' increased mass will also result in a more pronounced gravitational force, which in turn promotes stellar compression. So the actual extent of Sirius's perimeter during this transition into a red giant phase remains uncertain. Much seems to depend on the minutiae within Sirius' hydrostatic equilibrium, where the star's atmospheric structure maintains a delicate balance between gravitational forces from below and pressure exerted from above. The truth is that the intricate inner makeup of highly luminous red giant stars still remains an active subject for ongoing scientific investigations even today. As Sirius A eventually puffs out its outer layers, it will further expose the diminutive yet enduring companion that has orbited it for eons, Sirius B. It does ask an interesting question in that any mass accreted by the small dwarf star will push it closer to the Chandrasekhar limit. The limit is approximately 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, and when a white dwarf's mass approaches this, or surpasses it, the gravitational forces become so strong that they overcome electron degeneracy pressure, and this can trigger a catastrophic explosion, which is of course is known as a Type 1a supernova. Sirius B's mass is currently just a little over the Sun at 1.018 solar masses, so it would have to accrete a lot from its partner star. So although possible theoretically, its remoteness from Sirius A, at closest over 8 astronomical units, combined with Sirius A's relatively small mass to jettison, at least compared to other stars, does seem to probably rule out this possibility. The now mighty red giant Sirius A and the dwarf star of Sirius B will continue their waltz through the Milky Way until finally, as the red giant Sirius ages and embarks on its final metamorphosis, it will puff out all of its outer layers to reveal another star, this time the newly formed but lesser and dimmer white dwarf star of Sirius A. We shouldn't underestimate Sirius though, it is far and away the brightest star in our local area until we reach Vega, and even then some until the Capella system at some 50 light years is reached. Indeed, Sirius is the brightest star in most of our local stars' respective skies, if of course we exclude seeing each other's binary partners, like Alpha Centauri A's A and B for example respectively. Sirius is truly an exceptional star, and nothing like the ordinary. I often think we're very lucky to live so close and have it. After the Moon and Venus and Jupiter, it is the brightest object in our skies, brighter indeed than the planet Saturn, and it has not always been the case, and not always will be so. As Sirius gradually approaches our solar system, it will increase in luminosity over the next 60,000 years to become the Southern Pole Star. The prospect of using this beautiful star for interstellar probes possibly requires reconsideration due to its lack of convective zones. Detecting planets around stars like Sirius is notoriously difficult, but as the star eventually evolves into a red giant in around 200 million years, some planets may become detectable. Eventually, Sirius A will become a white dwarf, accompanied by its already tiny partner. The two stars will continue their mystical dance for eons and eons, until eventually, their light will fade and go away for good. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any video subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below, and perhaps next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.